Greetings, and welcome to Robonomics Spring School. I'm Johnny B., the scientific administrator of our project, and you've joined the theoretical track dedicated to the main theme of this school, privacy. Today, I will share with you fresh insights about privacy in relation to smart homes and Internet of Things. Why is it important to discuss? Well, first of all, the importance of privacy is often underestimated, and even in scientific literature, especially dedicated to smart homes, you will see that privacy is constantly associated with security and goes after it. Of course, these are interconnected, but still, these are conceptually different things. It often happens that privacy is sacrificed for the sake of security. If we speak in simple terms, then security issues largely concern the question how to harm a user and steal his or her data, and issues of privacy in turn, what data can be stolen from the user and how to use it. Secondly, if the consequences of a security breach are quite easy to explain, the consequences of a privacy breach are more subtle, and the effects often surprise even the violators of privacy themselves. We will see this in the examples that follow. What privacy is for? Before we move on to considering privacy in the field of smart homes, it is useful to see what modern social sciences say about it. The article, What Privacy is For, is quite well known in the privacy discussion circle. It was published in 2013 by American legal scholar Julie Cohen a leading theorist in the field of privacy. The author argues that privacy is not just about protecting your personal data, but about an entire environment in which people can freely develop the personal qualities they would like to have. Privacy can be understood as a buffer that gives people space to develop an identity separated from supervision, judgments, and values of society. Thus, privacy protects the subjectivity of the personality from efforts to transform it into a fixed and predictable object. And without this quality, it is difficult to imagine the development of humanity in science, culture, innovations, and technologies. Big Other, Surveillance Capitalism, and the Prospects of an Information Civilization A 2015 article titled, Big Other, Surveillance Capitalism, and the Prospects of an Information Civilization, discusses a concept that refers to the large-scale collection and commodification of personal data by corporations. The author, Shoshana Zuboff, an American professor in the field of social psychology, describes an extreme case of surveillance capitalism as a new power institution, which the author calls Big Other. The main principle of this institute is subtle and even unexpected, but very powerful mechanisms of control, which effectively suppress people, while creating new markets for behavioral prediction and manipulation. Professor Zuboff gives an example. If Google sold access to user data and devices to insurance companies, then insurers, in an effort to increase their income or reduce expenses, could directly interfere in your life. For example, forcibly reducing the speed of your car because you're driving too fast, or blocking your refrigerator, so you don't risk heart disease by eating too much ice cream. Of course, this seems like an exaggerated example, but here's the current reality. Insurance companies already monitor their clients' homes from satellite surveillance. The surprising nature of these mechanisms can be understood from another real example. In 2012, there was a case described where a client of the Target discount store came to complain to the company that his underage daughter had started receiving coupons for baby clothes and beds from the store. The man was angry and accused the company of trying to persuade his daughter to get pregnant. The company's managers were completely puzzled, but after some time it turned out that the girl was indeed pregnant, and the targeting algorithms had learned about it in advance from changes in her purchases. At the end, Professor Zuboff consistently argues that the spread of such practices leads to the replacement of classic market capitalism, which will upset any researcher of economic systems. The link between seller and buyer is broken, because corporations become concerned not with the most efficient satisfaction of their customers' needs, but with the best manipulation practices. Privacy by design. So, we have made sure that privacy needs to be protected, but how do we do this? Fundamentally, there are two approaches. The standard approach is privacy by policy, when various rules and extensions are released to existing services to ensure privacy. For example, users are encouraged to correctly configure privacy settings. The second approach is called privacy by design, and it involves initially embedding privacy protection at the stage of service development. This idea was born back in 1995, but the first frameworks implementing it only appeared around 2010. Major steps with this idea were made by companies only after the launch of the European GDPR regulation. The principles of the approach boiled down to the fact that developers from the very start of product creation implement practices to ensure user privacy. 
For example, all default settings ensure minimal user data collection. In the same spirit, all practices of this approach are carried out, minimizing the use of data, deleting already unnecessary data, fully informing the user about their use, and so on. More details about this approach can be read in these three publications, Privacy Mindset, Technological Mindset, Bringing Design to the Privacy Table, and Engineering Privacy, Internet of Things, and Privacy. Let's move on to considering privacy issues on the example of smart homes and Internet of Things. Surprisingly, an excellent overview of these issues can be found in a report by a government organization in Victoria, Australia, made in 2017. The first problem mentioned in the report is the ubiquity and invisibility of data collection from smart devices, which leads to unexpected and detailed conclusions about users. The high degree of detail makes it easy to create additional information, such as using neural network analysis methods. For example, sensor data on humidity and carbon dioxide concentration in a room can be combined to track room occupancy and do it with higher accuracy than would have been possible using only one of the sensors. This also leads to the problem of anonymizing data from these devices. Very often, providers of smart solutions incorporate a rather broad data collection at the design stage. The device refuses to work if the user does not agree with these conditions, and all that remains is to discard the device. Users in principle become very dependent on device providers, who often have different expectations regarding how long the device will remain in operation. The provider may stop supporting the device or a third party may stop providing a service on which the device depends. At the same time, switching to another provider is often very difficult due to the unavailability of transferring your settings and accumulated data. Basically, users are given little access to manage their purchased devices. Often, the device does not come with a full-fledged control interface. It operates on a plug-and-play mode. But there is a problem with this, as it is easy to forget that the device continues to collect data. Sometimes there is not even an on and off button, and to disable the device you need to take care of completely removing the batteries. Users may not even know what data the device collects, where they are sent, and how they are used. And the only portal to the data becomes the proprietary application from the supplier, which also collects data. The overall conclusion certainly leaves much to be desired. The market is flooded with products that do not respect the privacy of their users, and device suppliers are not striving to change the situation. The development of privacy protection standards for smart home of course the discussion on privacy protection has intensified over the years and this can be seen from the intensity of standard development in this area for reference i recommend the publication the development of privacy protection standards for smart home from 2022 which provides a good overview of existing standards and reveals the specifics of their development among the latest standards in the context of smart homes the following can be mentioned the 2019 ISO and IEC Standard on Private Information Management Systems, the first standard of its kind. The ISO and IEC Standard on the Basic Architecture and Protocols of the Internet of Things, from 2021. The ISO and IEC Standard from 2022 on Privacy Specifically for Smart Home Devices. IEE Standard for Framework of Blockchain-Based EOT Data Management. However, there are some nuances here. In 2020, the IEEE organization adopted a standard for managing smart home data based on blockchain systems. Among its co-authors are such key smart home device manufacturing organizations as ABB, Siemens, Xiaomi, and Huawei. The standard describes an EOT data management network titled as trusted. However, some of the key issues discussed in the standard are concepts that are very poorly compatible with the idea of privacy namely data sharing and data trade with third parties. A smart home is no castle. Privacy vulnerabilities of encrypted EOT traffic. And now for something completely different. Using the study, a smart home is no castle. Privacy vulnerabilities of encrypted EOT traffic as an example. I want to show how complex privacy issues are, even if companies try to adhere to privacy-oriented policies and system architecture. The authors of the study took sleep monitoring devices, a security camera, a smart switch, and a smart voice assistant for the experiment, and passively analyzed their encrypted network traffic. As a result, the authors found that simply by the frequency of traffic changes, one can find out enough private information about the user of smart devices. For example, a traffic from sleep monitoring device correlates with when the user sleeps, 
allowing a malicious actor to infer higher order behavior, such as whether the user has sleep disorders. The authors suggest considering how to encrypt such metadata, for example, by randomized delayed data transmission. User surveys. Now, let's consider what the users of smart homes themselves think about privacy. To date, a decent number of publications with surveys of smart home users have been made, with a total number of respondents of 1,000 people from European and North American countries. For example, among the top fears of users, the following information can be presented. About 40% of fears related to data breaches and its sale to third parties. About 50% of users worry that data from smart devices can be used to profile their lives and homes, and 85% of respondents name device access to audio and video recording as their greatest fear. Among the top three motivators for purchasing smart home devices, users mention the presence of control over their device's data, user cost savings, and ease of use. On the contrary, purchase blockers are called security and privacy issues. Interesting statistics are presented in the article, Users' Preferences for Smart Home Automation, from which we can judge about the most demanded type of devices from users. Users would prefer semi-automatic smart home systems that will store their data locally, mostly for personal needs, especially for monitoring electricity. Regarding user requests for functionality, the first five features look as follows. About 10% receive requests for protection, consent to data collection, and device access control. 20% have a request for transparency of device operation and associated services. 30% of respondents expect that they will have clear interfaces for managing devices and their data. Among the main wishes for device manufacturers, users mention mandatory and explicit consent request, active protection for any device software, device activation only upon explicit activation, the ability to choose exactly what data is collected, and how it is used. The ability to regularly delete anything from the data. Automatic data deletion and guarantee of their removal with legal consequences for companies. Privacy ranking. The last point that I would like to touch upon in the context of smart devices is the trend towards privacy ranking and the labeling of this ranking. In the coming years, we should expect active labeling of privacy levels, both in relation to the companies themselves and their devices and applications. For example, the Federal Communications Commission in the United States proposed a special certification mark in 2023 as part of the Cybersecurity Labeling Program for Smart Devices. Similar initiatives are being proposed in the European Union, which is mentioned in the publication, Privacy, Security and Data Protection in Smart Cities, a Critical EU Law Perspective. In March 2024, the Connectivity Standards Alliance, which is responsible for supporting Zigbee and Matter Protocols, propose a new labeling system for devices that comply with their security specifications. For more details, you can refer to these three articles. The already mentioned article about laws in the European Union, as well as the articles called Ranking Security of EOT-Based Smart Home Consumer Devices and A Study of Privacy Policies Across Smart Home Companies. That's all, folks. I hope you enjoyed this brief tour of the current state of privacy for smart devices. Remember, protecting your device's data is an important aspect of digital life. Yes, theft or hacking are unpleasant events, but far more destructive can be the subtle manipulation of your life and the base profile created from a small sensor.